everyone welcome to today's class where we will discuss now the resonance and the sharpness of resonance so what is a resonance it is the phenomenon of making a body oscillate with its natural frequency under the influence of the other vibrating body with the same frequency so we have already derived the relation for amplitude and the phase in the case of forced oscillation so amplitude is given by f divided by m 1 divided by square root of omega square minus p square plus 4b square p square where uh, you know m is the mass of the body and f is the applied force omega is the natural ang angular frequency and p is the frequency of the applied force means the frequency of the external periodic force and b is the damping coefficient and alpha the phase relation is tan inverse of 2 bp divided by omega square minus p square where b is equal to r by 2m and omega is equal to square root of k by m now the resonance condition in the case of forced oscillation can be satisfied with the help of two conditions so let us understand those conditions so at the resonance the amplitude must be maximum and for this the denominator of the equation 1 the denominator term means square root of omega square minus p square whole square plus 4b square p square must be minimum and this can be satisfied making the resistive force resistive force means b value minimum and also when the frequency of the applied force means omega is equal to p this condition we have discussed while explaining the cases of forced oscillation that is p greater than omega p is equal to omega and p less than omega so it is like we have to consider the second case here that p is equal to omega that is the frequency of applied force is equal to the natural frequency of oscillation or vibration of the body so if we take these two condition then the condition of resonance it will be satisfied and will get the maximum amplitude at the resonance so let us prove these two while taking the denominator of equation 1 to be minimum and the denominator of equation 1 will be minimum that is square root of omega square minus p square whole square plus 4b square p square is minimum suggest that the differential of the denominator term with respect to p it will be equal to 0 so let us derive to satisfy the two condition prove the two condition b is equal to r by 2 m must be minimum and p must be equal to omega for amplitude to be maximum at the resonance so from equation 1 the differential of square root of omega square minus p square whole square plus 4b square p square must be equal to 0 so we know the process of differentiation first we'll differentiate with all square root value this we can understand
the square root value can be represented by power half as well. So differentiating we will get half of then with respect to square omega square minus p square it will give 2 omega square minus p square then differentiation of minus p square that will be minus 2p plus 4b square is constant differentiating p square you will get 2p and that will be equal to 0. So simplifying the equation we get half into 4p minus omega square minus p square plus 2b square is equal to 0. But here the 2 uh, you can cancel out here uh, 2 to with 4 you will get 2p. So this this half into 4p that is 2p it cannot be equal to 0. We cannot make the frequency of applied force equal to 0. So what we understand that minus omega square minus p square plus 2b square that will be equal to 0. So as 2p cannot be equal to 0 we can say that minus omega square minus p square plus 2b square is equal to 0. So this suggests that omega square minus p square is equal to 2b square. Let us write this as equation number 3 and equation number 4. Uh, if we solve for p the frequency of applied force p square will be equal to omega square minus 2b square. If you take p square term to the right hand side and take 2b square term to the left hand side you will get omega square minus 2b square is equal to p square and swap the equation to get p square is equal to omega square minus 2b square. So therefore p will be equal to square root of omega square minus 2b square. The frequency of the applied force is equal to square root of omega square minus 2b square. So if the condition 1 and 2 is satisfied taking condition 1 where b must be minimum. If you consider this value minimum is nearly equal to 0 you will get p is equal to omega at the resonance frequency and hence the amplitude will be maximum. Thus the amplitude is maximum when the frequency p by 2 pi of the applied force as we know p is the angular frequency. So to get the linear frequency we have divided it by 2 pi. So p by 2 pi of the applied force becomes equal to square root of omega square minus 2b square divided by 2 pi. Now let us substitute the value of p square in equation 1 and solve the condition of resonance. This when p is equal to omega taking equation 1 we get a 
max means amplitude is maximum that is equal to f by m 1 divided by omega square minus as equation we have already derived p is equal to square root of omega square minus b square. So, p square will be equal to omega square minus 2 b square omega square minus 2 b square whole square omega square minus p square is equal to omega square minus 2 b square and the square of the whole term plus 4 b square omega square minus 2 b square p square is equal to omega square minus 2 b square now simplifying this equation we will get a max is equal to f divided by m divided by square root of omega square minus omega square it will be cancelled out and minus minus it will be plus and 2b square if you take square whole square of that you will get 4b to the power 4. Here it is 4b square omega square minus 8b to the power 4 or a max you will get f by m 1 divided by square root of 4b to the power 4 minus 8b to the power 4 it will be 4b square omega square minus 4b to the power 4 or a max it will be equal to f by m 1 divided by take 4b square common you will get omega square minus b square or a max it will be equal to f divided by m square root of 4b square is will be equal to 1 by 2b 1 divided by square root of omega square minus b square let us write it as equation number 6 and this equation is in terms of omega and b we can write in terms of the applied frequency then it will reduce to a max f by m 1 by 2 b square root of p square plus b square as we know omega square minus 2 b square is equal to p square so omega square minus b square will be equal to p square plus b square let us write it as equation number 7 so from equation number 7 for the low damping
a max means amplitude will be maximum if this p b value it is very less compared to p we can ignore it in the square root term means square root of p square plus b square we can write it as p square and square root of p square will be equal to p so the equation reduces to f by m 1 by 2 b p you can write it as f by m 1 by 2 b omega as well because at resonance p is equal to omega So, from this equation what we can see that as b tends to 0, the amplitude tends to infinity. The amplitude tends to infinity. The maximum in the amplitude value tends to infinity. So, taking sorry. So, what we can see that if b tends to 0, the amplitude maximum, if I draw it here, the resonance condition at p, when p is equal to omega, if we take it as amplitude maximum, so this is the case of equation let us mention it as equation 8 a max is equal to f by m 1 by 2 bp so if the damping is there that will tend to reduce the if the damping is large the maximum in amplitude value maximum in amplitude value that will reduce and if b tends to 0 amplitude maximum means this maximum will tend to infinity amplitude maximum it will tend to infinity so this only we will discuss in terms of sharpness of resonance so hence at resonance where we have equation e 8 that is a max is equal to f by m 1 by 2 b p or we can write this as equal to f by m 1 by 2 b omega as at the resonance what we understand p is equal to omega now if we try to find the amplitude value near resonance the change in amplitude from its maximum value f by m 1 by 2 b omega minus 1 by 2 b p that will be equal to f by m 1 by 2 b 1 divide by omega minus 1 by p so let us understand with the help of a figure And we will plot amplitude versus 
the applied frequency with changing damping value. So what we can see that the amplitude will be maximum, maximum value at the resonance means when P is equal to omega and when the applied frequency decreases or increases at both the sides then the amplitude it goes on decreasing and this change in amplitude is given by f by m 1 by 2 b 1 by omega minus 1 by p. Now let us discuss this figure with the help of different value of the resistive force that the that is the damping value damping coefficient value. So if we say that B is equal to 0 means damping is equal to 0 this equation suggests that the amplitude maximum it will be infinity. So our amplitude approaches infinity when B is equal to 0. So we have assumed that B1 is equal to 0 the amplitude a max approaches your infinite value. Now if we go on increasing the damping what it happens the amplitude at the resonance goes on decreasing and also we see that as the damping value it is increasing if B2 is greater than B1 or here B3 this graph represents for B3 damping value which is greater than B2 and B1 and here this is for B4 where it is greater than B3, B2 and B1 means in this side B value is increasing. When we going downwards in the graph the damping coefficient value is increasing. So what we see here other than the decrease in amplitude value the broadening in the curve it is happening means the curve becomes more broader and the amplitude decreases while you increase the damping. Change in the amplitude at the either side of the resonance when it is gradual decrease in the amplitude we call it as flat resonance and when there is a steeper decrease in the amplitude we call it as sharp resonance. So let us write this the let us conclude this figure by writing 
whatever we understood. So, as P is increased or decreased, P is decreased or increased slightly from its resonance value, the amplitude decreases on both the sides. So, when the amplitude at resonance falls rapidly, as in the case B is equal to 0, when the frequency is slightly changed from the resonance value, means with the decrease or increase, if the amplitude falls sharply, then we call it as sharp resonance, means the resonance is called sharp. And when the amplitude at resonance, which is in the case B2, B3 and B4, falls gradually, as P is changed from its resonance value slightly in the either side, then the resonance is called flat resonance. So, what is sharpness of resonance? How we define it? So, the sharpness of resonance, concluding from the figure, what it is? It is the rate of change of the amplitude rate of change of the amplitude with the small change in frequency from its resonance value. So, if the rate of change is large, then the resonance is sharp and if it is small, then the resonance is called flat. So, let us uh, take the last topic of oscillations, then we will solve the problem and discuss the shock waves. So, till now we understood what is simple harmonic motion, damped harmonic motion and the forced oscillation. Now where we can apply, so one of the example of application of the forced oscillation is Helmholtz oscillator. So this Helmholtz oscillator is a device to analyze a complex sound node that is to find out the particular frequency present in the node. We know there are seven nodes and uh, to find out a particular node, we have a device called Helmholtz oscillator. As usual when you have done uh, the experiment of a simple example of a Helmholtz oscillator, when you blow air in a bottle or when we blow uh, air in the cap of any pen or what, we get a different sound. So, that no sound will be of particular frequency. So, that is a very simple idea of a Helmholtz oscillator, which detects the frequency of a particular note. So, at that particular frequency, it exhibits sharp resonance, means it exhibits sharp resonance to detect the frequency of the note. So, what is the design of this resonator? It is a hollow sphere-like structure having a small leg with a smaller diameter. So, when the air is blown inside the hollow sphere, what we observe is a, through this Helmholtz resonator, a single isolated resonance condition and no other resonance below or above 10 times of that frequency. So, here in this hollow sphere, a kind of vessel which, which it is, the resonance depends upon the pressure near the neck. So, you have a high pressure outside and the sound gets confined and here at the neck it will reduce to the low pressure region and again here it will be inside the hollow sphere. The pressure of the sound again it increases and when it comes out with a thrust then you get a 
isolated resonance single isolated resonant condition and will be able to detect the particular frequency of the node so depending on that you can de design different kind of resonator for example if you have a bottle and if you in that bottle in that bottle if you fill with water and blow air inside that the sound will what you listen it will be of different particular frequency then compared to when you blow a empty bottle so this is a example of a helmholtz oscillator there are different designs of helmholtz oscillator to detect the complex sound note the frequency at which the resonator oscillates so if the density of the air or density of the medium inside the hollow sphere is changed listen to the note of the sound having a different frequencies so the frequency at resonance can be calculated by taking s here is the speed of sound divided by 2 pi into square root of area divided by length into volume of the resonator so a particular frequent frequency at the resonance that is what we call it as resonance frequency can be calculated for the helmholtz oscillator and the note can be detected so in today's class we have learned resonance we have discussed the condition of resonance and we have understood what is sharpness of resonance and we have discussed with the idea of sharpness of resonance a detection of the particular frequency of the note with the help of helmholtz oscillator thank you